So I teach project finance from a funder's perspective. Uh, I have, like I said, I, I helped to structure what was the first ever infrastructure fund um, in Africa. And, um, and so I, you know, um, have this background in, in finance. And so that perhaps it is one of the reasons why, but really the other reason is because I want my students to be able to shift perspectives. I think too often uh, funders are not able to shift perspective to understand the perspective of investee companies. But I think we also, um, as entrepreneurs, have to be able to shift perspectives to understand what is the perspective of the funder, what is the perspective of the policymakers, the regulators, et cetera. Um, and so I think that, that that agility is something that we're all going to need to have increasingly more of. Um, and so I teach my students, I use some fairly complex tools. Um, I'm starting to increasingly use engineering tools because like I said, there's a systems thinking approach to this. And that's important for funders, Lori, because the, the integrated complexity, increasing complexity of integrated systems is an emerging category of risk. So if it's an insurance company, if it's a large financial services concern, it needs to be concerned about what we're talking about um, because our actuarial models are incapable. I mean, I hang out with hedge fund managers and other kinds of, of funders and they're like, eh, never seen this one before. So, so our, our models, which are based um, on, on this kind of you know, standard deviations around the mean. So historically how we model things is we take historical data around how an asset has performed, a stock, a share in a company. And then you plot standard deviations around the mean and that's how you get the bell curve, et cetera, et cetera. And so, you know, even complex ways of measuring uh, probability, things like um, Monte Carlo simulations where you're trying to understand simultaneous systems of equations so you can begin to understand the complexity because the world is complex. You know, you know, whilst this is going on, that's going on, right? Right. So in order to model things from a financing point of view, you have to actually, we have to begin to develop better models. So I've started using engineering tools to do, to, to try to capture the complexity around the integration between water, energy, food, and land systems. So understanding the project finance deal, right? You're, I don't know, you're building, you're building um, a hydro powered energy plant in the Congo, Inga three on the Congo river, right? But you've got to flood the basin and displace 50,000 people. You're going to also kill a lot of plants and animals and destroy a lot of biodiversity. At the same time, you're going to create a lot of jobs. And then there's going to be tourism because now there's a lake. And so you've got all those businesses. And then a lot of people who didn't have access to affordable, sustainable electricity now are going to have access to electricity, which means there's a whole bunch of other kinds of economic development that can happen. How do you model that? And so in the past, what we've done is we've just modeled the infrastructure, the project. We're going to build a dam on the Congo River and we're going to flood the basin and it's going to be great. We're going to produce electricity. Excuse me, what about the 50,000 people who had to move? And then those who didn't move died. And by the way, I'm explaining to you a real life case study. It's the Kariba Dam. It was funded by the World Bank, Zambia right? No one took cognizance or tried to incorporate into how do you actually understand the value proposition of this project based on this complex set of variables. We just flooded it, flooded the uh, basin and all those people and all those animals and all that diversity was just like, oh, that's par for the course. And that happens every single day. And that's still the way we do project finance deals. So for those of us who are like, oh my God, what's she talking about? That is why people are blowing up pipelines on the Delta because they can't fish. Their farms are polluted. No one's talked to them about this and you're busy drilling for oil on their land. I mean, at some point you start taking shell executives hostage because you can't eat. 
clearly there's a better way. And so what I teach is, how, is, is, is hopefully a better way. 